Hey guys, welcome to this third part of the video series Breaking Down a Portrait, where I'm drawing the last part of the face, so to speak, which is the mouth. As you can see, I'm starting off not with the upper lip, but with the um, the crack of the mouth. What is that called? The, the opening where the lips meet. And the reason why I start with that is because, yeah, you know, why do I start there? I don't know why I do that. I do that because um, I don't want a hard line of the upper lip. And also, this is also to determine the width of the mouth. As you can see, I use my pencil to determine uh, where the corners of the mouth um, are in 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 uh, in respect to the eyes and and so on. And I immediately immediately start filling out um, some of the shading of the lower lip and the upper lip. And this is just to give myself a feel for for uh, for the shape of the mouth. Also, as I'm drawing the mouth, I try and incorporate the, the the surroundings of the mouth. As you can see here, I have flipped the paper ninety degrees, and this is because it's uh it helps me figure out the curves of the mouth of the lips and sometimes it's easier to look at something with fresh eyes and one thing you one way you can do that is to turn your paper you can also turn it 180 degrees upside down that's also fine but in this case i like to do it laying sideways so to speak and as you can see now i switched to the black colored pencil the Polychromas from Faber-Castell. If you haven't seen my other videos on why I use this particular pencil, it's because uh, graphite, in, 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 a, in the traditional sense, graphite in pencils have a tendency to look very shiny on paper, uh, the, the very soft pencils. And what this black colored pencil does is it gives great intensity of the black, of the dark, but with a more matte finish. Now obviously I know that today you can get graphite pencils with a matte finish with a very soft core um, that that sort of gives you the same effect as this one but this has just been a friend of mine for so long. <laughs> it's been one of my favorite uh, go-to tools so I still I still use it a lot. Plus, I bought it in bulk, so <laughs> I might as well use what I have. And as you can tell, I'm uh, I'm building and building, much like I would do with, for example, watercolor or oil painting. I am working in layers, and I'm layering on top of the other layer, and this is sort of to build the intensity or the shading the um the amount of shading um and um and again trying to work out the corners of the mouth the surroundings of the mouth a mouth isn't just the lips uh there's also a an upper lip that goes you know all the way up to under the nose uh so there's like a a concave shape from under the nose down towards the mouth, depending on how plump your lips are. And also the lower lip also sort of stands out. So it casts a shadow uh, on, the, on the top of your chin if the light hits from above, which it does most of the time. And also you can see all these little creases on the lower lip uh, as well as the upper lip. Um, doesn't mean he has very dry lips it's just because that's why that's how lips look when you get this close to them um you can study your own mouth in a mirror and draw that or you can find reference photos it's uh it's up to you 
but in this first mouth tutorial, I am only drawing a closed mouth. Now, I have plans on doing tutorials with open mouths because I know that that is the challenge. Teeth can be so hard to draw because there's a lot of personality and therefore a lot of uh, potential flaws <laughs> in drawing teeth. So um, there's a risk of really messing it up. and But it doesn't have to be that hard. It's all about practice and it's all about really looking at your reference photo, really paying attention and mastering that hand-eye coordination. And there's only one way to do that and that is practice, practice, practice. Now, as you can see, I'm trying to integrate the lower lip into the surroundings so that it's not just, uh, you know, a set of lips smacked right there in the middle of the face. No, um, it's, a, it's an integrated part of the face. So it's very important to pay attention to all these little details in the surroundings of the mouth. Like I said, up against, up towards the nose and the corners of the mouth and those nasolabial folds that goes from from you know from the from the nose or from the side of the nose down towards uh the corner of the mouth um and uh yeah this video is not as sped up as the other ones and that's because i wanted to give you an idea of all these tiny details in the lips. Now I'm doing stubbles and that requires a very sharp pencil. So before I started on this, I made sure my pencil was super, super sharp, almost like a needle. <laughs> um, remember stubbles are have different lengths and they have they grow in very different directions. So make sure there's there's no pattern-like uh, look to it. Make it look as random as possible. Again, look at the reference photo, but not too much. You don't want it to be too perfect. So they can't all be in the same direction. It's very important here to make it look as random and as natural as possible. And also, there's a bit of hair underneath the lower lip right there. And next up, I will be drawing the shape of the chin. I'm just going to do a quick tutorial after this where I show you the chin and the shading of cheeks, temples, forehead. Yes. And once again accentuating those um, those soft, soft uh, shades under the lower lip to make it look more uh, plump, I guess, down towards the, the chin to create that, yeah, like a different shape. Anyway, that's it for the mouth. I hope you enjoyed it and it made you want to try drawing mouths yourself. Um, thanks so much for now. Thanks for watching. Bye!